Hello, Internet. It is I, Rick, also known as Shroom Shroom or The Real Shroom on Twitch. And I took a little bit of a hiatus from streaming um, as I had oral surgery, which really sucked. I advise you to floss your teeth, boys and girls. That's my um, helpful hint for you. But I'm back, and I'm excited to be playing some Modern tonight on MTG Online. So let's take a look at what we're working with. And um, what is the most powerful text that you can have on a magic card? Well, it would have to be you win the game, right? Um, there are some effects that just do that. Um, but second to that would be stuff that says you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. So tonight I'm going to be playing a really janky um, kind of combo prison deck that's trying to just stick as many of those effects as possible. For instance, um, we are playing some Boggles. They're hexproof creatures along with Cloudsteel Kirin. This is a three mana equipment that is a 3-2 flyer. It's one of the Kamigawa equipments. So uh, just by itself, the 3-2 flyer, but you can equip it for five and it gives equipped creature has flying and you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So if I have this equipped to a boggle, it's pretty hard for a lot of decks to interact with. A lot of decks don't run um, main board uh, stuff that can remove artifacts. So they can't kill the boggle with spot removal because it's hexproof. So in against many opponents, that's just going to be a scoop because they just can't win the game and I can't lose. Also packing a welding jar to protect the Kirins um, just so I can regenerate and, and cancel the first piece of removal. Of course, it does cost five mana to equip this. So I'm running some Sigarda's Aid so that um, I can just cast that and then cast the Kirin and auto equip it to my boggles. Uh, second I win the game effect, or I can't lose the game effect, is some getting to the trials. This three mana planeswalker, as a zero ability, can create an emblem with, as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So packing two Gideon of the, tribals, of the trials to make those emblems, and one Gideon ally of Zendikar, who is just kind of a better Gideon, that is also very good at protecting your board state, um, and can just be a win con in itself. Getting the trials can also beat down and is a good defensive piece. So that is um, you can't win effect number two. I'm also running, believe it or not, the whole, uh, where is it? The Book of Exalted Deeds combination. So if you don't know this, the Book of Exalted Deeds is a three mana artifact, which has an ability that's basically never going to come up, but it has a second ability for three white, tap it, exile the Book of Exalted Deeds, put an enlightened counter on target angel. It gains you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Activate only as a sorcery. So we are combining that with Mutavaults. Uh, Mutavaults are a land that for one mana can become a 2-2 two -two creature with all creature types until the end of the turn. So my Mutavault will be an angel until the end of the turn for one mana. Um, and then I crack the Book of Exalted Deeds to put the counter on it. And then I have a land that has a counter that gives me the you can't lose the game effect. So that's going to be very hard for a lot of decks to interact with um, if I can stick it. I am running one Silence. This is specifically for the turn that I tried to go off with Book of Exalted Deeds because, of course, like this is sort of an all in combo. You know, like I'm fully tapping out to try to pull this off. And if my opponent, like, removes the Mutavault, you know, Lightning Bolts it or Fatal Pushes it in response. I've just wasted an entire turn as well as my Book of Exalted Deeds. So Silence is just there as a as a way to try to ensure that um, we can pull it off. Of course, we do need to have six lands on the battlefield uh, to do it, but um, that's why I have the one Silence in my main board. Let's see, what else are we working with? Okay, so we've got a bunch of enchantments. We've got our Cigars Aid. We've got Sterling Grove to help us tutor them up. And we are running the Nine Lives Solemnity combination. So Nine Lives is this three mana enchantment that is hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on Nine Lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on Nine Lives, exile it. When Nine Lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. But if we combine this with Solemnity, players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, or enchantments or lands. That means that uh, we can never put incarnation counters on nine lives, which means that sources of damage can never hurt us, basically. So it's sort of like a soft, you can't lose the game lock. It's not a true, you can't lose the game, but it basically means no form of creature uh, or, or like spell-based damage can affect us. Nine lives is also just a good piece for slowing down the game. The deck is slow. Uh, like, it's possible we could stick a Bogo with the Kirin on turn three, but a lot of the times it's going to take some fishing and tutoring for us to get to uh, our lock pieces. So Nine Lives is just good for letting us take nine hits uh, without having to, worry, having to worry about our our life total. 
So those are the basic combos. Um, oh, I also have a worship as a one of enchantment. If you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life totals less than one reduces it to one instead. This is really great with boggles because boggles are just hard to get rid of. So if I have a boggle on the battlefield and I stick a worship, like a lot of decks just can't do anything about that. So that is another sort of soft lock piece. And um, I am running a Stoneforge Mystic to help find the Kirins. Also a couple of miscellaneous pieces of equipment that are just good when you have Stoneforge Mystic, like a Sword of Fire and Ice, a Batter Skull. These are things that can help me win the game too, although in reality, like we'll win by opponent scooping. Um, hopefully they'll scoop when we assemble a, one of our lock pieces that they can't deal with. Although if they really want to be a jerk, they can make us just, you know, deck them out. If we have a you can't lose the game effect, um, we can win that way too. Um, we're also running three Profane Tutors. Uh, we, have, we do have a couple of Triomes in, in our Fetchland mana base. Um, these are just two Demonic Tutors that are a little slow um, that can let us grab whatever pieces that we're missing. And we do have a little bit of interaction. We got a couple of Path to Exiles, which I like this card. I know a lot of people don't play it these days, but um, I've been seeing a lot of that new Dragon from uh, Phyrexia All Be One. It's great against that. It's great against the Murktide region. It's great against Resolved Archons. Um, it's good against a lot of things. Just one man instant speed, deal with the creature, done. And a couple of prismatic endings. Um, and I have one privileged position, which is a five mana enchantment that gives all my other enchantments hexproof. Because, of course, people can try to remove the Solemnity. They can try to remove the Kirin. Um, you know, they can kill our Gideons. But if we have a privileged position, uh, it makes it much difficult for them to interact with us whatsoever. Total of 25 lands, because we do want to make our land drops. We want to get up to 6 mana so that we can have the Exalted Deeds combo with Silence backup. Um, just a bunch of fetches, shocks, the two triomes, a couple of Wooded Bastion filter lands, because we do want to get to triple white. One um, Baseju, one Iganjo, um, and one Balaged Recovery. So that's the main board. We are just trying to lock people out, and we're, we're just not going to lose the game. We're going to try as hard as we can. Again, with my kitchen sink uh, philosophy of deck building, throwing all the different kinds of effects at the wall, uh, trying to stick as many as we can, at least one. The sideboard contains a couple of containment priests for um, indomitable creativity, a springer for decks that use a lot of ETB effects, including indomitable creativity. Also, it's good against blue-white control because that deck uses, it leans very heavily on solitude for its spot removal. Uh, rest in peace for graveyards, settle the wreckage is just a sweeper against mid-range decks. Three Veil of Summer for use against blue-white control, uh, other control decks. One Heroic Intervention. Of course, our Boggles are v vulnerable to sweepers, so this is a little bit of defense against that. One Endurance also for graveyards. Uh, Force of Vigor and a Knight of Autumn for artifacts and enchantments. Gadok Teague is good against Tron, also good against blue-white control. Damping Sphere against Tron and anything else that's trying to abuse mana. And one Pithy Needle can just catch a Planeswalker or a miscellaneous annoying artifact, enchantment, etc. So that is the deck. We are going to not lose the game, and our opponents are not going to win the game. That's the plan anyway. And if you like this kind of off-kilter, off-meta uh, MTG content, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. So we're going to play some... This is a casual deck, to be clear. Like, this is not going to take down any, like, major tournaments or anything. Um, so we're going to play some games in the practice queue. Tourneys, uh, or leagues just are not very much fun right now, I find. In modern, there's just way too many like underworld breach decks. Misha's bobble, it's just it, it's just so annoying to play against. It's not very much fun. So on the practice cues, you know the competition won't be as severe. This is a casual deck that you would bring to like your local FNM or you know your LGS just for casual play. So let's get some matches. It is a fun deck to play. Okay, we got a game here against Gozo. We're going to be on the draw and let's see um we can keep this i think we've got a stoneforge we've got a gideon we've got the book of exalted deeds so we'll need some draws but uh we've got the p the first parts of stuff ether vial uh-oh humans all right let's play a fetch land and we'll fetch a triome
treasure vault. So, okay, they're like hammer time, probably. Ingenious Smith. That's scary. We could be dead pretty fast. Shadow Spear. Alright, we'll get our Indotha Triome. There's a Bogle. We do need those. So, I could get a white source, or I could just play this forest, Sterling Grove. Next turn. Yeah, I think I like playing Sterling Grove here. Next turn, I can play a Tapland and play Stoneforge Mystic, and then the turn after that, I can play a Boggle and cast a Cure In, and we'll have one of our uh, You Can't Lose the Game effects online. Lauren of the Third Path. Well, so much for that. I could still top deck Cigar Aid. That would be sweet. Sword of Fire and Ice. Could also Balaged Recovery the Sterling Grove. And then next turn, I would play Sterling Grove. And then I'd have to keep up mana to activate it. That's so slow. I think I'm just going to play the Balaged Recovery as a land. And I'll stone forge. I'll grab Batter Skull or the Kirin. I want to grab the Kirin. All we need is a cigar that's aid. I also have this Gideon that I could deploy at some point. Stoneforge. They get Cauldra. Can I top deck Cigar Aid? Just going to take this. Sunpetal Grove. All right, let's play the Grove. I think I'd bogle on their end step. I'll put in the Kirin and then try to equip it next turn. Hope that works. Uh oh. Looks like we got a bot. Okay, they're letting both of us draw a card, another land. Here comes Cauldra.
So we are going to take a hit, but we will survive. And we'll just see if they have some way of getting rid of the Kirin. Top decking like a welding jar would be nice. So we're taking eight. Sure, we'll take eight. All right, let's stone forge the cure in. Let's grab a planes and equip it to our boggle. Okay, so they can't win and I can't lose until they get rid of the key ring. Come on, give me privileged position off the top. I would settle for Welding Jar. Violin in. Elish Norn. Okay. That doesn't do anything to me. Drawing us cards. Urza Saga. Pretty good. Esper Sentinel. Uh, the only problem is that uh, we do have a lot of fetch lands, and we're not going to be able to fetch anything once they attack us, because we'll be at, like, negative life. Sure, go for it. We go to negative one. Make that negative five. Path to exile. So let's stone forge the sword. Let's equip our boggle. They don't have anything with reach, right? Sure, we'll attack. We'll do damage to them. Uh, yeah, that's correct. We draw another Kirin. That's not bad, actually. Because we can equip the second Kirin. I wouldn't have minded drawing a land there. Soul Guide Lantern. Ingenious Smith gets even bigger. It's 
sack it to draw a card. They're fishing for their artifact, artifact removal piece. Drawing with Lauren. Can I draw, like, Sigarda's aid? No. Welding jar. Privileged position would be the best draw, probably. All right, let's go ahead and just path the germ. Oh, we can't pay for Esper Sentinel. Don't draw anything. Ephemerate. On Lauren, okay. Boo, we didn't draw the, uh, the protection for it. Okay. So, Night of Autumn. We had a lot of looks for it, but we couldn't find it. Force of Vigor. Settle the wreckage. Cut. Big Gideon. Silence. I don't think they're going to be interacting at instant, instant speed with our Muta Vault. And... I don't know. One thing I've noticed about this deck is that I have these cards that, like, ostensibly are to win the game, but, like, I never actually win the game, win games that way. I just win by people scooping, so maybe those cards should just be more combo pieces. Okay, we've got Solemnity, we've got Profane Tutor, which can get us nine lives. I guess it's a keep. Oh, I should have brought in Hushbringer for Lauren. I didn't think about that. They're an Ephemerate deck, too. That was a mistake. Alright, let's fetch a Plains. And suspend Profane Tutor. Stone Forge, gonna get Cauldra, mm-hmm. All right, let's get down to Solemnity. Can I draw a Sterling Grove? Here comes Cauldra. All right, let's grab our nine lives. Can't find a Sterling Grove. This is still good defense. I'll hold on to this Triome to possibly cycle at some point. 
Come on, we just need a sterling grove or a privileged position. Solitude. Yeah, run it out. Go for it. Ephemerate it. Kind of rebound, bounce their stone forge. They could get like a haywire mite or something. That would be annoying. They do not ephemerate. They attack. It does nothing. We can't take damage. We cannot take damage from sources of damage. We can lose life. More lands. All right, I guess I'm just going to play a stone forge. Grab a Kirin. And I'll cycle my triome. <laughs> they scoop. We locked them out. All right, let's do that again. Let's bring in Hushbringer and cut. Cut one book of Exalted Deeds. That's always the easiest combo to board out. Do I need all this removal? Maybe I'll cut one prismatic ending. No, that can kill Cauldra. Eh, that's fine. I just need to combo off. I don't need to interact with them. I just need to combo off and protect my stuff. Okay, we've got Gideon, Sterling Grove, Settle the Wreckage. Okay. I like Settle the Wreckage. Night of Autumn isn't bad. There's a Saga. Very scary card. Privileged position. That will be useful later, once we have our lock pieces in play. Actually, I want to play Sterling Grove right now. So let's grab our planes. Portable hole in the Sterling Grove, okay. So they don't get a construct. Called her complete. We draw another Sterling Grove. But I think I just Knight of Autumn the Urza Saga.
I can Gideon the germ, which is pretty good. Another Gideon. Plus on the germ. Solitude. Ephemerate. No ephemerate. Okay. Just equip the Shadow Spear to Stoneforge. Attack Gideon. Okay. We have a play. Ooh, in a privileged position that we can now cast. So I'm just going to emblem Gideon here. And we'll let them attack. And we'll settle their wreckage. Everything at Gideon. Settle the wreckage. We'll fetch Triome. Okay, we're in good shape now. Ooh, Basaji is good too. So I think... One, two, three, four, five, six. That costs seven to equip. I think I can start beating down with Gideon. I should have played privileged position first. That was dumb. Okay. Green, white, whatever, whatever, whatever. All my other permanents have hexproof. I have Sterling Grove too to give that shroud. So that's like impenetrable. Elish Norn. Okay, let's Sterling Grove. Plus on Elish Norn. I guess we might as well play our Kirin, or do I hold up Besaju? Well, Elishnorn's not going to do anything. I'll just play my Kirin. That way, if I draw a Boggle, I could be able, be able to equip it right away. And they won't be able to ever remove it. Because this is giving everything hexproof. This is giving all other enchantments shroud, so everything has hexproof to them. Nothing can be targeted. It's 
Solitude. Can't exile my stuff. What? Up to one target creature. What? Other permanents you control have hexproof. Wait. Oh, the Shadow Spear. I forgot about that. Wow, that's tricky. So we should have blown up the Shadow Spear. All right, let's plus on Elish Norn. I'll block Shadow Spear with my Muta Vault. Actually, let's just do this now. Blow up the Shadow Spear. Play a Kirin. Okay, now they can't target my stuff. And I'll let them hit Gideon. Actually, they can actually just equip Cauldra now. And that does give Trample. So I can't protect Gideon anymore. They draw two cards. I just need to draw a Boggle. There's so many, so many good draws. Even like a Book of Exalted Deeds. Profane Tutor, Nine Lives, so many good draws here. Stone Forge, gonna draw two pieces of equipment. Nettle Cyst. Come on, give me something good. They attack Gideon? Sure. Ah, just a land. So bad. I have so many good draws. A plus one on, I don't know, Nettle Sis. Doesn't really matter. This is another issue our deck can have, which is that, like, it doesn't have... It's got the three Profane Tutors. Maybe it should be four. But it doesn't have card draw, really. Naughty Grandpa, thanks for the follow. How you doing? They're just going to equip Cauldra. Bad day at RCQ. Oh, regional regional qualifier.
They're scared of Settle the Wreckage. Okay, everything at Gideon, that's fine. I thought there was already, are there just RCQs going on constantly? I thought there was already like a Pro Tour going on. Can I draw a Boggle, please? If I draw a Boggle, I win. Every couple of months is a new season. Uh, is it still Pioneer? Is that the format? Modern. It is fun to play, like, paper modern. I don't know if I'd want to do it in RCQ, but... I have been lately going to the LGS for paper modern, and it's quite fun. All right, can I get a boggle, please? Force of Vigor. I can't cast Gideon and Force of Vigor. One in four, the one is a buy. Oh, I'm sorry. I bet it's brutal. Like, it's all just like S tier decks. This doesn't sound that much fun, honestly. Um, so I guess the play is going to be Force of Vigor. I guess I should do it now before they can get Construct tokens. I'll hit the Nettle Cyst and the Urza Saga. Okay, thank you for letting me know. All right, I need to top deck a Boggle, please. Three Merfolk in the room, multiple creativity, Merc prowess, yeah. Some Jund and Tron, a lot of scam. Oh, I hate that scam deck. Speaking of scams, so this is six six, ten thirteen fourteen. I guess I block Stoneforge, right? Oh, they could have Yganjo. Uh oh. Oh, is that just lethal? Man, I couldn't find the boggle. Uh, I had so many looks at it too. So many looks at like good cards, but just couldn't get it. All right, we are going to be on the play against TDM, TDM, TDM. I'm familiar with TDM. Let's see. We've got Book of Exalted Deeds. We've got a Boggle. We've got a Profane Tutor. I guess that's a keep. I mean, every hand of this deck looks like so janky. I don't have black mana. I guess I'm starting on this tap land. Ether vial. So humans. Taxes. All right, there's a Triome. That's good. Go ahead and run out this Boggle.
can you qualify for the uh, for the regionals by playing online, or do you have to go to the actual physical events? You can do it online. I might try doing it one time. I don't know if I'll do it for modern, but maybe next time the Pioneer comes back around. Ghost Quarter. Yeah, it's taxes. That's annoying. Don't hit our Indotha Triome, please. They hit our Indotha Triome. Grab a Plains. So, Book of Exalted Deeds is pretty bad against them, because they run, like, at least four Ghost Quarters. They might have other land destruction lands. Temple Garden. Of course, I have privileged position. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for... I'm going to try to get up to this privileged position and then go for Book of Exalted Deeds. So, I guess, for this turn, I will cast the Book of Exalted Deeds. Thalia would be really annoying. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff they have that would be annoying. They played a planes and not a ghost quarter, so that's good. Thalia. Okay. I think I'll play this Flooded Strand. Fortunately, they're not presenting a clock, really. I still need to find the Muta Vaults. But I can find that with Profane Tutor. Stone Forge. Grabbing Caldera. Caldera. How did I guess? We'll take two. All right, we'll get our other triome.
Okay, suspend the Profane Tutor. Play a Boggle. Play a Balaged Recovery for the land. All right, I need you to not blow up any of my lands this turn. And then with Profane Tutor, I can fetch Mutavolt. And I'll have Privileged Position back up. They flash in, what, a Flicker Wisp? Gonna flicker the stone forge. Grabbing sword of light and shadow. Sure. Here comes the Cauldra. I just need to survive for two turns. Okay, Chumphalia. So I'm taking five, six, seven, eight. Oh, but I have to shock this uh, Temple Garden too. Okay. So, I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to uh, live long enough. So, what could I draw? Filing in a three drop. Archon of Emeria. <laughs> Mutavault. <laughs> okay. Well. Oh, it just tapped. Oh my goodness. Can we survive? No, we cannot. That's so sad. Tedium, tedium is right. That's a tedious deck. So let's settle the wreckage. Let's Hushbringer. I like Endurance as a Flash Blocker. Maybe Pithing Needle. It can name Ether Vile or it can name Giver of Runes. And one Night of Autumn. Now, I'm going to cut all of this like I'm going to win the game fairly tech. So cut the batter skull, cut the sword. Cut this Gideon. 
It's hard to make cuts in this deck. Because everything is a combo piece. Um, cut silence. I don't think that's going to be necessary. That was sad. If not for that Archon vialed in... We would have we would have got off the combo. I'm not sure that it would have actually won us the game, but it would have gotten off at least. Um, one more cut. Cut one of the path to exiles, I guess. All right. Um, I think we can keep this. We have Solemnity, nine lives, and a Sterling Grove, so it's pretty good. need to find land number three and we should have a lock right there they'll need two pieces of artifact interaction that's assuming we draw nothing else giver of runes let's fetch our triome Okay, there's land number three. I think, though, we kill the Giver of Runes. Ghost Quarter. Grab a forest. Oh, I needed to grab planes. This is double white. Oops. Cloud Steel Kirin. All right, let's Sterling Grove. Nothing? Can I draw a white source, please? No. Play this boggle. I could Sterling Grove for Sigartha's aid, but that means I don't make my land drop next turn. So I probably don't want to do that. Tectonic Edge. Just straight up destroys land. I don't get to search or anything.
I would like to draw a fetch land or plains. Archon of Emeria. Fetch land would come into play tapped. Oh, that's so annoying. I can play my Windswept Heath, then they can destroy it with Tectonic Edge, but I gotta do it. And I guess I'll play my Kirin. If I ever get up to five, I can just equip the Boggle. That guy. Yeah, this is tough. This is a tough matchup. They've just got so much disruption. They name prismatic ending. Okay. So let's go grab our planes. And play nine lives. Make our land drop for turn. And we got Solemnity we can play. Even if they tax it, we'll have enough to pay. I also can just equip the Kirin. Sword? Sure. You have to deal damage to us to trigger the effect, so that's never going to happen. Book of Exalted Deeds? <laughs> okay. So we'll get down this combo, and then next turn we can equip the cure in. Turn after that, we can queue up the Exalted Deeds combo. So it's looking good. We might pull this one off. They do have double tectonic edge, so they can kill the Muta Vault. But they can't damage us, and they can't interact with these enchantments. They need two pieces of enchantment removal, because first they have to hit the Sterling Grove. All right, there goes Muta Vault.
I can get two of my lands. I will eventually draw more. They are also putting themselves down to two mana to do this, and tapping out. Another boggle. Opponent's thinking about something. Not sure what it could be. So I don't have any more not, uh, basic lands in my deck, I don't think. So all my lands are going to come into play tapped now, which sucks. But if I ever get to five mana... Solitude. Alright, they get to Solitude my Kirin. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. Eat Sigarda's aid and then another Kirin. Like, another Sterling Grove would be nice, too. Because then we'd be, like, invincible. Yeah, sure. Equip the sword. You can't damage us. Sterling Grove would actually just seal the deal completely. Had to exile. Mm, I'll save that in case they get like a cauldra or something. All right, they just scoop. They cannot get through our lock. And I think I just run it back. Now let's bring in the let's keep all of our paths and cuts. Cut endurance. It's just so hard to actually cast expensive spells.
Um, this hand looks okay if we can keep our lands. I'm going to lead on this tap land. Leonin Arbiter really needs to die like immediately temple garden is a good draw yeah that cannot be allowed to live another arbiter All right. So I guess... Actually, I don't need to do this quite yet. Control Z. Oh, I already did. Too late. Okay. That was probably dumb of me to do it right then. Because now if they ghost quarter me or something, I won't be able to pay. Yep. That was a bad play on my part. Of course, like... I'm not sure it would have worked out for me anyway. Because it's not like I can crack a fetch land in, in response to the ghost quarter. Ah, their, their, their arbiter prevented them from searching their library with Stoneforge. That's funny. You to vault. I think I just pass here. Make sure that I can pay for the Arbiter. Okay, so they're going to choose Settle the Wreckage, no doubt. Settle the wreckage? No, getting of the trials. They don't attack. Um, 
I think I just say go. They probably have another anointed peacekeeper. Actually, there's no point in me just saying go. Because they're going to blow up a land with Tectonic Edge. So I guess I just cast Sterling Grove. Okay. Um, so it looks like we're taking five. I could put nine lives on top of my library. Then they could ghost quarter me. They could ghost quarter my one of my white sources and I wouldn't be able to cast it. So I guess I can't do that. Land? Cigar does aid. That's pretty good. Play my boggle. Leave up two mana. They could Tech Edge and Ghost Quarter me. All right, we take six. They don't. They could do it during my upkeep. They don't. Okay, let's cast this Kirin. Equip it to my boggle. It doesn't have any kind of protection, which is scary. Boy, they're about to time. Okay, play a fetch. 
they go. I guess I should have attacked. It's irrelevant. If they have enchantment removal, we lose. I think they needed to double LD me last turn to keep me off of three mana. But we'll see. They could just have a disenchant for the Kirin. Can I draw a welding jar? Just hitting me for three, okay? Another Arbiter. Prismatic Ending. Guess I'll just play another Sterling Grove. Thalia. We go to negative life. Nine lives. Okay, let's play nine lives. Oh, cost an additional mana. Ether vial? Okay. So we're gonna get down the solemnity. Solemnity? So now we have double can't lose the game protection. And all of our enchantments have shroud. We've got double sterling grove, so they can never destroy our enchantments. So I don't know what they can do here. They're just gonna time out. We got them locked. I think they should have been way more aggressive with their LD. They could have really messed us up. Sure. None of, none of this matters. You cannot damage me. Land. Um, I could gain four life. That wouldn't really do anything, though. I mean, this doesn't really matter. None of this matters. Just blow up your ether vial, I guess. To stop you from double spelling. 
I guess they didn't draw land, so maybe they were just a little afraid of sacking both their their LD lands. But I mean, they could see they could see the lock coming. There's no way they were going to be able to win. You cannot damage me. And even if you could, I can't lose the game. Are they going to spend their last two minutes just flailing against our lock? Uh, Pithing Needle? Sure, I'll just name Giver of Runes. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Actually, the Giver of Runes doesn't matter either. I'll just name Ether Vile in case they draw another one. If I name one of their land, oh, I, I could have named like one of their lands because they didn't crack their lands in response. It doesn't matter though. Opponent's gonna make us play it out, I guess. I might speed this up in the recording. Because this is garbage time. They cannot win. Solitude? Sure. Solitude away. You can't damage me. By the way, you can't win the game or I can't lose the game. You can't target the Glade Cover Scout with Solitude. Oh, Ephemerate. Tricky. Uh, I'm just going to start yielding through turns to speed this up. Back up to negative two life. They have finally given up on trying to damage me. Book of Exalted Deeds. There's no point, because they have the they can just destroy it with their tectonic edge or or their ghost quarter. See, this is one of the unfortunate things about this kind of deck is like some people will play it out even though there's no way they can kill us they'll make us play it out i've had people like make me deck them for 40 cards <laughs> okay you can blow up the kirin Sure. Oh, I was at negative life. Uh, okay, so they did they did have a way to beat me. Oh man. So we lost. Ah, I needed like a the welding jar. Alright, well that was close. We took a game away from uh death and taxes, so GG's. I apologize, opponent. You were right. We almost went on time, though. Uh, yeah, I'll play first. We're against Alamo Smithers. Um, <laughs> this hand is okay. 
I have Book of Exalted Deeds. Doesn't seem like I should mulligan this. Yeah, although we couldn't take combat damage, we were we, losing the Kirin meant that we could lose the game and we were at negative life. Den of the bugbear. All right, I think I'll play my Boggle. There were a lot of good draws I could have gotten that would have saved me. Like even the Welding Jar. Conspicuous Snoop. So Goblins. Grab Triumph number two. More lands. Well, I mean, this sword is pretty good against goblins. I could exile the Snoop. I think I'm just going to play the sword. So they're drawing a lord. But this is going to give me pro red and let me start. Sniping goblins every turn. There's the Lord. Okay, I don't mind a chump blocker. We'll kill the Lord and draw a card. Another Boggle. They can exile Goblin Ringleader. So I'm going to Stone Forge and get my Kier in. Or I could just be boring and grab Batter Skull. That would be the much safer play. Because they have a ringleader coming, they can just run us over. I guess I'll grab the Batter Skull. We'll test out this winning fairly plan that we, for some reason, have baked into our deck. Okay, they kill this stone forge. Our skulls five. All right, let's attack with the boggle.
We do have this Sting Scourger that can just bounce one of our creatures. Kill the Snoop. Draw a card. Another land. Cost seven to equip this. I think I'll get out the Book of Exalted Deeds. And a boggle. They scoop. The sword is just devastating. Okay, goblins. Give me Hushbringer, Settle the Wreckage. I like Endurance as a surprise blocker, Night of Autumn to gain us some life. Let's cut a Book of Exalted Deeds. Let's cut one Gideon. They actually do have a lot of ways to interact. Well, they probably have goblin grenades. Cut the silence since I'm cutting a book. One more cut. A Kirin. Okay, um, this is fine. I got a Profane Tutor, I got Sigarda's Aid, that's always nice to have, and a Welding Jar, so if I can get a Boggle, I can equip the Kirin Instant Speed to a Boggle. If I can find either a Kirin or a Boggle, I can find the other piece off my Profane Tutor, and I have the Welding Jar to protect it. Ether Vial. Gids. Let's just play our tap land. Snoop. Blood Crypt on top of their library. That's good. Glad to see non goblins. All right, there's a boggle. So let's suspend Profane Tutor. Next turn, play Cigar to Zade Boggle. Turn after that, get our Kirin off the Tutor. Play it. Equip to the Boggle. Mog Fanatic. Goblin Matron. Search for a goblin. Am I going to die? Bogart Harbinger. When it enters the battlefield, you may search for a goblin, put it on top. So they put Kiki Jiki on top. Yeah, I think I'd die. Unless I can kill the Snoop.
And that's a three drop. Hmm. Um. So I believe we just lose. They bug art Harbinger. They put Kiki Jiki on top of their library. The Snoop has Kiki Jiki's ability. Is that infinite? It makes another copy of itself. I'm not sure. I believe that we're dead, but we'll play it out. Here's a boggle. Maybe I needed to Gideon one of the goblins there. I don't know. I haven't seen this combo too many times. Munitions expert. They play the Harbinger. They copy the Harbinger. They're getting all these tapped, and then they have some way to uh, untap everything, I think. be dealt to him this target permanent so even if i had named uh i wonder if i had named if i had plus gideon on the snoop if that would have stopped the damage that they'll do sling gang create sacrifice a goblin okay yep they drain That's how they win, the Sling Gang. Okay, so Pithy Needle? Damping Sphere? Nah. We were so close. We had it next turn. That was sad. Probably cut privileged position. Yeah, that's too slow. Mm, we've got double profane tutor, but no way to act no access to black mana. I think that's a mulligan, actually. Okay, this is a lot better. We've got two Path to Exiles. What's the bottom, though? Book of Exalted Deeds, but we have the Muta Vaults. We're on the play, too. I'm going to bottom the Boggle. Hushbringer, not bad. Mm. 
All right, just need to draw some white lands. We've got these paths to, which can stall them. Besides, you can blow up the ether vial. I think I'll do that. Or do I save it for a land drop? I think I actually save it for a land drop. Because I have the Hushbringer protecting me from those ETB abilities. We're going to try to get the book, book of Exalted Deed going. Um, I will upkeep Path the Snoop. Oh, I just need to draw one one white land, please. Violin. Another Snoop. Thoughtseize on top of their library. I'm going to go ahead and just path their snoop now. Oh, there's a white land. Okay, we got the combo ready to go. We just need them to not have like a goblin grenade. I don't think that deck plays goblin grenade. Munitions expert won't do it because of the Hushbringer. Or lightning bolts, no lightning bolts either. Uh-huh. Lords. Uh-huh. Or Marshall, tap out. All right, they have one card in hand. Land. Activate Muta Vault. Add triple white. Book of Exalted Deeds to this angel. <laughs> we got it. Yes. The combo. We did it. Wow. Sweet. Beating goblin combo. Awesome. All right. We're against cool guy 365. We're on the play. Um, we got a Boggle plus a Gideon. I guess that's keepable. Kind of hard to say with this deck. We don't need to stop on our opponent's upkeep.
grief, so is this living end? Oh no, it's just scam. Well, we do have Balaged Recovery, but this is like one of the best decks in modern. We're not going to beat this. Book of Exalted Deeds. Oh, they're on a one lander. Well, I guess we'll play the book. Ragavan. Sure. Sigarda's aid. Worship. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a chance we can win? Yes. I can fetch a plane. Assuming they have no burn or anything. I can fetch a planes. Play worship. I also need them to not have a grief or a thought seize. Then next turn, I can balaged my boggle and play it. Ragavan, dash. Sure, get me down to one. Oh, are we going to jank him out? Are we just going to complete... Oh, I just draw a boggle. That works too. Um, is there anything else that I would like to retrieve with Balaged? Maybe just in case, grab another Boggle. I actually probably should have just played that as a land, since I'm not going to be able to fetch... They may have a way to destroy the worship, in which case we would die. So I need to find, like, Sterling Grove. Ragavan. Of course, Ragavan's still going to keep dashing, which is annoying. I will be able to block it with my extra boggle next turn. Profane Tutor. Ooh, geez, that's bad. I don't think they can play Suspend cards, though. Yeah, they can't. Okay. Ragavan Dash. I will block with one of my boggles. 
But it's when it deals combat damage to a player. So does that mean they deal no damage? Or does it still count as dealing damage? I think it still counts as dealing damage. So sure, we'll block the monkey. They can just like undying malice it, sure, whatever. All right, I need like privileged position or Sterling Grove. Udivault would also work. Theory. Discard a card, then draw a card. Sure. Beauty Vaults? Another book of exalted deeds. Well, that doesn't do anything, but I guess I'll cast it. See, the Raghavan could eventually find... Oh, it's, it's legendary. I'm dumb. It's legendary. Raghavan eventually is going to find, like, my Basaji or something. So I need to find some protection. Gideon. Eh, better than nothing. Make a 2 2. Terminate. And they can kill Gideon here. At least that means Raghavan is not hitting me. Oh, Raghavan is going for me. Oh, he's a 4-3. Four, four, Exazel land. They discard terminate, and they just cast one too. So, maybe they don't have a third creature removal spell? Stoneforge. Sure, what do we grab? A Kirin. Sword would enable me to kill the monkey. Let's grab a Kirin and play it. If they terminate it, that's one more terminate that's not going towards a muta vault. Sure. Dothy Voidwalker.
Fury to kill Stoneforge. All the MH2 hits. Well represented. Okay, give me a Muta Vault right now. Muta Vault. Yes! Muta Vault, you're tapped out. Oh, you got a treasure. Let's see if you got a one mana removal spell. Looks like they don't have it. Or they're slow rolling. <laughs> nope, they don't have it. They scoop. Wow, we beat Rakdos Scam. Okay. So give me Hushbringer. Give me... What else? They use the graveyard, right? Rest in peace. I like Endurance as a surprise blocker. Maybe Veil of Summer. Cuts, batter skull. I do like silence against them. Cut a Gideon, a Kirin. It's so hard to make cuts with this deck because, like, it's a combo deck. Cut one book. I like Settle the Wreckage also. They're going to bring in uh, Enchantment Rule, so I want the privileged position. Ugh. What to cut? Cut one Boggle. One Sigarda's aid. Now that's that's such a key combo. Um I'll just go down to the one Gideon. Run sixty one. Um, that's a one lander. Can't keep that. Um, this is gonna fold if we get griefed, which we will. But then again, there are grief decks, so you can't really mold a five against it. On bottom. Welding jar? Turn one grief on dying malice. Oh, Raghavan. Okay. Another boggle. That's not bad. Play a boggle. I will trade for your Raghavan. Sure, Undying Malice. Fame Death. Ragavan, such a fun card. 
Well, we'll see if we just lose the game to it. Grief. Did I bring in my Hushbringer? I did, right? Pretty sure I did. I take Worship. Undying Malice. Get Griefed again. They take Endurance. Good fair magic, just the way Richard Garfield envisioned it. They are down to one card in hand. If that means anything, it doesn't really. I'll play my Mutavault and try to block Raghavan. Chances of success are basically nil. So they gotta have a removal spell. But I'll make them have it. Or a, a scam spell. Lightning bolt. They are empty handed. So if I could draw something relevant, that would be nice. Stoneforge. I'll go for Stone Forge. What do we grab? Probably just Batter Skull. Oh, I boarded out Batter Skull. I could go for Kieran and just pray to top deck Cigar to Zade. If I took Sword, I could... I'm going to take 6 damage, so I'll be at 3. If I took Sword, I could play it and equip it next turn, and I could kill Raghavan. But I would still die to the grief. I think I just take Cloud Steel Kieran. Heart of the cards. Let's top deck Cigar to Zade. Um, I think I actually chump Raghavan. Because it doesn't make any difference whether this costs two or three. I need Sigarda's aid, or like Settle the Wreckage would work too. Path to Exile. Does give us another look. Play the Kirin, no. If I play the Kirin, I could block Raghavan and trade. That's assuming they don't draw a removal spell. Which is very likely that they will, because that's like their entire deck. A lot of their deck. That also means 
that if I top deck Sigarda's aid. I mean, I won't have the Kirin, so I won't be able to equip it to my Boggle. I think I'm just living for one more turn. Trying to find Sigarda's aid or settle the wreckage. Thoughtseize? Yeah, that pretty well seals the deal. Um, what do I path to exile here? I guess grief? Um, I guess I block. No, I'll, I'll let this through. They don't get anything. Horizon Canopy. It's another card. Guess I'll do it now. Path to exile, okay. Staying alive. They pass. All right. I've stabilized ish. Sun Petal Grove. I guess I'll attack. What could they have? I don't know. It's not even worth the risk. It's not even worth the risk. Nothing? Land. They could have like solitude or something. They are playing white. Ragavan. Got a block. Here comes the scam spell. Iganjo. That's not bad. They very likely have another scam spell of some sort. Now, do I want to put an enchantment on top of my library? I don't think so. Sigarda's aid. Maybe that will be helpful at some point. Have I lost all of my Kirins? 
I've lost one, right? Cloud Steel Kirin. Yeah, there's one in my graveyard, so there's still one in my library. So I need to draw a Boggle and then a Kirin. Nahiri is just going to find them another Raghavan that they can dash. Exile target with mana. Yep. Sure, you got me. The pile of MH2. I mean, we were just a couple of top... We were just like a couple of top decks away there. You definitely had a chance in that game. Maybe I want the Batter Skull back. Probably cut Silence. Yeah, I like the Silence. We cut Privileged Position. The problem is they definitely have like artifact removal in their deck. Maybe not though. I'll cut privilege position. It's really slow. Let's draw our sideboard cards. Like S Veil of Summer, that would be sweet. And this hand looks pretty good, but like I'm just gonna get griefed. But do you really mulligan this hand? I have Profane Tutor, I have Welding Jar, I have Worship. I'm gonna keep. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I do need to be mulling for Veil vale of Summers. Uh, no. Oh, I thought that was a fetch land. It's actually a... I thought it was a windswept teeth. It's a temple garden. That makes this hand a bit worse. Raghavan turn one. Everyone's favorite. There's a veil of summer. I think I'll hold up Veil of Summer. Opponents. Cool guy. You're not so cool. Your deck is lame. Whatever. People like to play good decks. In the practice queues. Once in a while, you run across a tier deck. I mean, the taxes deck and the... Uh, Goblin's deck are both really, really good decks. What do they exile? Forest. There's the Grief. Let's Veil of Summer. I 
I draw Kirin off of Veil of Summer. They don't evoke it. Uh, they don't scam it. Proxa. Um, sure. So this card. Profane Tutor? I can't cast it? Or the Kirin? Or maybe Worship? We are ways away from Worship. Probably Profane Tutor. It would be nice to find Rest in Peace at some point. I suppose I could grab it off my Sterling Grove. The stupid Raghavan. Prismatic Ending. Well, it's not a land, which sucks, but it is a way of getting rid of Raghavan, so I'll take it. Necromentia? Okay. Naming. Glade Cover Scout. Okay. So I think I have four Glade Cover Scouts and one, uh, I think I have one Slippery Boggle now. There go my Glade sc Cover Scouts. I should have one more Boggle. Bogle. Can I get a land for Gideon? Ooh, rest in peace. That's a good draw. Season Pyromancer. Such a good card. Modern Horizons 1. Pretty good set, too. Okay, there's a land. Guess I play Gideon here. Plus on the 2-2. Two -two.
Fury. Kills the Gideon. Well, at least they don't have the scam card for it. Oh, the dressing piece means that they can't uh, thought seize. Takes the Kirin. Let's find nine life solemnity. Veil vale of Summer. Nice. Drawing with Castle Lockdwayne. Hey, there's Solemnity. We've got the Sterling Grove. Can I just top deck nine lives? That would be so sweet. Or Sterling Grove would be an excellent top deck as well. Horizon Canopy. Let's draw a card. Another Veil of Summer. Let's put nine lives on top of our library. So our enchantments are unprotected, but Rakdos is not known for their enchantment removal tech. Drawing off Lockwing. They could have like Feed the Swarm or something. Raghavan. Can't damage us. I think it still counts as damaging the player, though, even though... Oh, no, it doesn't. Not with the nine lives. It just does nothing. Fain death on the Pyromancer. Beauty Vault. I would feel much... Better if I could top deck a Sterling Grove. Raghavan is back. Can't damage us. Kirin. I guess I'll play it. Drawing off Lock Dwayne. Mm. 
They scoop. They have no way of dealing with our enchantment lock. Wow, we beat Rakdos Scam. That is legitimately like, like one of the best decks in modern. So there you have it. The deck can actually win games. Um, we had some other close matches too. Our match against Death and Taxes was really close. Some of those other games, uh, we were just a draw or two away from assembling the lock. So you see the deck actually, actually can win some games. And it's a fun deck to play. You know, I think as I stated earlier, let's uh, let's actually take a look at the deck. The deck could be improved. I think by just focusing more on the lock pieces, like, I don't know, cutting like Batter Skull, Sword of Fire and Ice for like more Book of Exalted Deeds, maybe. Then again, the sword was really good in that matchup against Goblins. But um, I don't think the deck is ever going to win through like, dealing combat damage to your opponent, basically. Like, that's going to happen one in a hundred times with, with this deck. You're going to win by locking them out of the game and uh, by preventing them from winning with the text of effects like Cloud, Steel, Kirin, and Book of Exalted Deeds. But anyway, that is the deck. You can't lose Tribal. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do enjoy this kind of off-meta, off-kilter MTG, MTG content such as what I provide on my channel. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to uh, to try out that would be fun and interesting, janky, a little janky. All right, peace out. Catch you next one.